Kipikazi. Hello. We love the smells coming out of your station. What do you call that? To me, that pet side thing, it looked like that. It's a wild spinach. We call it unom lomboi uh, in my yes, culture. Yes. But so you're cooking it in a way that you're familiar? Yes. yes. I think what's so important, particularly when you come to a different country, is you can find things that you're inspired by, yeah. but you know how to cook them based on what you've used before in the yes. past, building instinct into your food. Yeah. And that's a, an incredible gift, really. Thank you. I was happy to hear that from her. Contestants, you have 15 minutes remaining. It's also time to start thinking about how you're going to put this together. Lovely flavors coming from this kitchen. Can't wait to see what you're creating there. You can do this. I'm a little bit worried because I haven't done my rotis yet and I still need to put my prawns in the regard. OK, Rox, is it prawn time? Yes, it is. Just going to let that sit in there for a little while. Your roti looks really good, it's popping up. And I see you're using the traditional technique. I am, and I'm really, really happy with the, the, the texture and what it looks like. I realise I need to move it because I need to start with my puris. Because I have not used them with the yellow lentil before, and I'm not too sure how they're going to come out. When it's placed um, into the hot oil, it should actually pop up and puff up and leave like a hollow inside. It looked promising. The moment I turn it around, my puris are not popping up as I wanted them to. So I'm in a panic. Guys, you've got five minutes to go. Your focus should now go to plating. Come on, you need to move oh, it on. I wanted to put some lentils, and I forgot. It worries me a little bit. I decided to check on my prawns because I didn't want it to have it overcooked. It's still raw inside. So freaking out, I quickly put it back in, and I turn up the heat to give it almost like a flash cook. Contestants, you have 60 seconds left. You really do need to be finishing up now, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. Need to be finishing it off now. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, stop cooking, guys. Stop cooking. Well done. I'm feeling happy. I got everything on the plate. But it was like a last minute dash to just make sure it wasn't raw. Yeah. I'm not feeling that fantastic, to be honest. I didn't manage my time properly, and I feel like I needed some more time. Uh, I'm hoping that it's, it's enough to keep me in the MasterChef kitchen. Well, there's some interesting looking dishes out here. But the question is, does your cooking live up to the fresh taste of Mauritian cooking? It's now time to see who's risen to the occasion or who's landed in hot water. <laughs> Flipper. I'm hoping that the fact that I'm the only person who did dessert will give me a little bit of a sparkle, but let's see. Again, throwing it out there, stretching yourself. The only person to do a dessert today. How do you feel about that? Terrified, <laughs> but it just, the, the fruits and the, the colors and the, made me think of, of a coral reef. And I just wanted to somehow bring that in. And so take us through how you've represented that in your bowl. So the tomato is the sea anemone, but closed. Um, stuffed with a mascarpone and yogurts mixture. And then my little bit of coral is the caramelized uh, pineapple with some seaweed mint. 
To be honest with you, this is the dish that I'm most intrigued about. I've never had a poached tomato in a dessert before. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> it looks beautiful. The colours are magnificent. I've never in my life tasted a dessert anything like this before. It's exciting. My mouth is popping. I can taste black pepper. I can taste chilli. I can taste the creaminess from the cheese and the dairy and the coconut. It's magnificent. I think it's really beautiful. I think that's very, very gutsy. You know, knowing what's on the line and still going for a, a dish that could have gone either way. I take my hat off to you because you pulled it off. Really, well done. Thanks, Philip. So happy and so relieved and so validated by it. Roxy, you up? I'm hoping what the judges would be amazed with is that my prawns are perfectly cooked and they really do taste Mauritius in it. I did a prawn ragai, some rotis, a bit of a spicy mazavaru and a little cucumber pickle to go with it. Your roti is delicious. I saw you making it in a very traditional way and the prawns are cooked perfectly. The raw guy probably needs a bit longer to cook. It just needs to reduce in flavour and get a bit thicker. It's quite mild in flavour. When it comes to the actual sauce, I'm for me, it's lacking something. There's no layering of other flavours that I can pick up in there, though, especially the spices. And the prawns are obviously just cooked very briefly in the sauce. So there's a faint hint of that, but not enough. It's more like a tomato dish for me. Thanks. Thanks, Rox. I'm a little bit upset because I wanted to just push myself to do something completely out of my, my comfort zone. And I thought it was fine, but the judges didn't. Spogazi. I made chicken biryani for you guys. On the side, it's a uh, pad thai and uh, carrot and coriander sambal and um, boiled eggs on top. <sighs> so, Spogazu, I saw at the end of the challenge you were worried, you were thinking about something that you could have added. Yes, five minutes, gee whiz, I forgot the lentils. <sighs> yeah. And how do you think it's going to affect the overall taste? Uh, lentils is also starch, and I, also, I have rice there as a starch, so, yo. <laughs> I'm hoping it's not going to affect anything. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, the presentation is beautiful. You've picked a really lovely plate, and all the colours just pop on the oh, plate. Thank you. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I wish you could serve me up the whole pot that you cooked it in because I want to eat all of it. <laughs> it's delicious. The spicing is incredible. I can taste star anise and cinnamon. It's really subtle and it's mellow throughout the whole thing. The pet's eye that you've cooked is delicious. But the biryani, the fact that you cooked it in 60 minutes and it's got all that flavour. I want your recipe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What I love the most after tasting this dish is the fact that you took the inspiration of Mauritius and uh, I think you did a good job in, you know, drawing the inspiration and bringing in an element of spogazi in it.
and your trademark is packing flavor into your dishes. And this is what I'm getting. You're growing and you're finding sipogazi. And this is the sipogazi that we've been seeing. But now you're starting to realize that. And I think uh, the island trip has really done good to you. Oh, wow. Well. And um, I hope it carries on. So, well, thank you so much. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Getting that kind of feedback, it means a lot to me.